I'm Jay Parkinson. I am a doctor in Williamsburg, uh, Brooklyn. And I bet, how many of you guys uh, knew that the edge of medicine was in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, as a matter of fact? There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I did two residencies. My first one was in pediatrics. My second one was in uh, preventive medicine at Johns Hopkins, where I also got my master's in public health. <clears throat> I'm also the chief imagineer of a company called MICA. We're a software company up in Canada. We have about 20 employees that uh, do a lot of really awesome stuff that I'm going to get to show you. So um, a little preface to this discussion. First of all, I talk a lot about doctors, and I speak specifically about primary care doctors. Specialists, I'm going to reserve them from another for another talk. All right. So basically, I just want to tell you guys that I went into medicine to change a world, really. I mean, for each one of my patients, as a matter of fact. And here I am on this stage in front of amazing, amazing people and that are changing the world for the world. So thank you for welcoming me up here. Um, I just have one question for you guys. What's the main reason relationships fail? Oh, man, you guys are really, really good. <laughs> very, very fast. Um, and that's true. It's bad communication. That's the reason why relationships fail. You guys ever heard of the doctor-patient relationship? Of course. Well, you know what? I'm sorry to tell you that it's failed. I mean, pretty miserably, as a matter of fact. I get eight minutes of communication with people. Um, and the first day of medical school, I really got married to you as a patient. And, you know, I'm now having an affair. <laughs> it's a pretty bad one, of course. She's pretty stingy. I mean, you know, she's demanding, extremely controlling. She's abusive, even. And so who is she? Well, she's the insurance companies. That's pretty unfortunate, but she's my sugar mama, you know? I mean, she pays me, of course. She's, you know, I got to keep her happy because that's where the check's coming from. And if I don't, she doesn't pay me. So I know it's dysfunctional. I know it's really ridiculous, but, you know, I just really, obviously, I want out more than anything. I mean, it's time to go. I mean, I really just want to be happy again, and I want you to be happy. I don't want the person I married to be happy. I want my relationship back. <clears throat> so on the first day of medical school, I did get married, and 468 80-hour work weeks later, I got her back. On September 24th, 2007, just over a year ago, I hung up my shingle with $1,500 I saved up from residency. <laughs> my goal was to just provide a super easy visit for people, and what I did, I designed my own website, and people would, would go to my site, visit my site, see my Google Calendar, choose their own time, tell me their symptoms, my iPhone alerts me, I do a house call, and they pay me via PayPal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I kept it in Williamsburg. I didn't go outside of Williamsburg. It was small. But importantly, I communicated normally. I didn't have any office. I didn't have any staff. I had the internet and your apartment. It was really the world's first virtual primary care practice. But really, it was the Toyota way. It was lean. It enabled me to practice medicine and solve 90% of the problems. I mean, when you go to primary care, when you go to the doctor, they don't whip out like $50,000 machine to diagnose your strep throat. It took care of a lot of problems. It was very DIY, but I got a lot of press. I mean, I this boing boing, Kotke, Gothamist, Wired, Yahoo News, Seth Godin. It was pretty crazy. But then the healthcare industry started paying attention to all this stuff, and I was on the equivalent of Time Magazine for the healthcare in the American Hospital Association. So why? Why did I get all this press? Well, it was pretty unique, and it was pretty gimmicky. I mean, I sure did meet a need, though, and that's really why I did it. I was, accessible, I was an accessible doctor who communicated just like you do. Have you tried to find one of those lately? I mean, it's pretty hard. <laughs> Say, for instance, if you're in Massachusetts, well, they mandated insurance a while back. They, I, 
<clears throat> they actually added 340,000 people to the insurance pool. They were all paying about $400 a month, so they all said, I better use it, right? So the wait time went up to 52 days for an eight-minute visit. That's called abundance. <laughs> but what about scarcity? Well, that's primary care doctors. That's me. You can lump me in with the 5% of people that decided to go into primary care this year. And primary care is the foundation of a strong healthcare system, though. But I'm $240,000 in debt from medical school, just medical school. And if I wanted to take a job in Connecticut, for instance, I could work there. I could start at $72,000 an hour, working 60 hours a week and make $23 an hour. That's what starting is. If I wanted to do that in New York City, I'd make $110,000 and I'd make $35 an hour. A specialist makes three to 10 times that. You know, they of course get to work less, they get the better lifestyle, and they even have more than eight minutes with you. Why would anybody do primary care? It's ridiculous. So what do primary care docs do? Well, you know, we talk, I think, I make a plan, I talk to you,